Hello and a very warm welcome to this no dig and permaculture inspired kitchen garden in August. Really quick before we get into the garden tour, I wanted to tell you about a product I really love and it's these Vigo Garden raised beds. So obviously, you know, I'm a huge fan of raised beds. This whole garden primarily consists of raised beds. There are multiple benefits I think outweigh the potential downsides because I like having a set area where I can grow stuff, have it raised up from the ground, and also if you find yourself in wetter climates, raised beds are better for drainage. This garden is actually on old footings of sheds. So there's actually concrete underneath this layer of grass. So whilst there are loads of raised beds out there, you're not gonna find a stronger or sturdier metal raised bed than a Vigo garden bed. The thing that I love about these beds is that you can also customize the sizes. For example, the 10 in one raised bed kit comes with 10 different size variants that you can use. So if you have a really small garden, an awkward shaped garden, you need something that's quite long and narrow, Vigo Garden Beds will suit it. So if you'd like to look at getting your own Vigo Garden Beds, head to hughesgarden.com, my own online garden center. I'm an authorized retailer for this and many other gardening brands. All of the products I've hand selected to be suitable for anyone wanting to grow food. So I've actually been away from the garden for a week or two working on the various projects. And when I walked through this morning, I felt a real sense of autumn in the air. It's nice and crisp, probably because it's an early morning as well. But the leaves are starting to change color. It's feeling very still. It's very reminiscent of September, which is just around the corner. So I'm gonna show you some of the favorite things that are happening in the garden, uh, just to hopefully inspire you. and really share what's happening in this space. The thing I've really learned this year is just how much buckwheat flowers. I've grown two different varieties and it is still going around seven or eight weeks later, still these beautiful flowers and the striking red stalk. So I'm absolutely gonna be growing this again. Another thing that I think is, is really quite wonderful is these are chocolate sunflowers that look really cool. Perhaps I'll interplant some more bright sunny looking sunflowers but I love the darkness of these and what's really fun is that we've got this abundant climbing bean and it's been wrapping itself around the sunflowers and actually growing beans and uh, I actually I love that I wonder if there's a way that I can utilize this in further years growing beans up these sunflowers a little bit like growing beans up sweet corn but this just looks so nice and I think it's really magical. So the planting in this garden is also matching the changing of seasons. This is perpetual spinach, which is starting to really come into its own after I cleared the field beans, which were here. Um, it's opened up this light. And then we've got some chima derapa, just as basically as a green manure, but I've direct sown a load of, this is Spanish black radish, which is a fantastic winter radish that I'll be harvesting throughout kind of November to February. What I really like about a kitchen garden at this time of year is the variety of structures and the textures. So I've got this Amaranthus cretanus that is looking really, really nice versus the flowering of the, the tender stem broccoli. And then I've got this fennel and also this ochre. And each one is completely different. We've also got different colors happening here but they're all food crops and they look really nice. And one thing that I'm really looking forward to doing next year is experimenting with some edible ornamental borders. This bed here has turned quite wild. I like how it looks. However, I am going to actually clear much of this just to get some extra plantings. It's now turning for me to the final week or two of putting any new plants, either sowings or transplants, outside into the garden. I will be using more coverings this year, for example, growing under cold frames uh, to get more winter salads that are fresh that don't have to be from the polytunnel. I really like how this bed has been for both pollinators, um, but also for flavor and for the eyes. 
But yeah, this is gonna be cleared out, gonna make it nice, neat and tidy, because I do like to take pride in the garden, but sometimes it is, it is good to have a little bit of a wild area. This corner here brings me some mixed emotions. You'll probably see that these beans don't look very healthy. And I was wondering why on earth do they look like this? And I had no idea. I thought maybe it was just the drought because I can say officially we had a drought after the, uh, the, the studies were published. But what's actually happened is something's gone at the bottom of the plant and actually just pulled the whole root ball out and they've basically dehydrated to a crisp. So I've tried to stick them back in, but they haven't really recovered. That's a bit of a pain, but on the plus side, it looks like here I'm actually going to have my first ever crop of outdoor cucumbers. This year I thought, you know what, why am I not doing it? Give it a go. Market more is the, the one to go for. It's looking really, really good. I can see some decent sized cucumbers. And also in this patch, I definitely grew the biggest cauliflower I'd ever grown before. So that was a nice little tick for the season. This is my kale patch. And compared to other years, it's much smaller because I never get around to eating enough kale but I can very easily get caught with planting too much just because it looks nice and it, it does look nice don't get me wrong I mean the leaves of this red kale in the morning is absolutely beautiful but this half bed is going to be more than enough three different varieties they're all looking nice strong and healthy we also had some spare pak choy seedlings that I've put in the back and those are also looking really nice probably ready to harvest in about a week or two and I've also got this championing kind of coriander that grew itself uh, and it's nice to still have these fresh coriander leaves. It's going to be one of actually my key sowings in polytunnels in September. This patch here was where he grew the really nice fennel. That's all been harvested and I've put in some more fennel seedlings with the hope that we might get, even if it's a smaller crop, a certain crop of fennel kind of towards the end of autumn. And I've also stuck in a load of radish. Radish is one of the key crops now to plant. Now, I do like fresh radish, but where I think radish really wins is in certain types of preserving and fermentation. And that's kind of going to be the key goal for most of the radish that I sow and plant over the next couple of weeks. This bed has seen quite a lot of change over the year. The beetroot, it's been a fantastic year for beetroot. This is golden beetroot and it's been producing so well, some massive roots in there. Then here where we were growing keltus, that was removed, used as a mulch material. And now I've sown some buckwheat as a little bit of a green manure. A chicken came in and scratched up half of it. So we had to do a bit of a re-sowing. Um, proves that chickens aren't the most suitable uh, for a kitchen garden because they scratch a lot, but that's absolutely okay. It's looking really nice. And then these leeks, I mean, the color of these leeks, it's almost, it's like a, I can't even describe it. It's almost like gray. It's not, it's not green. It's like a blue, gray, really striking color, especially on a dull day like this. It seems to really complement uh, a morning. And I, I think it looks amazing. And then towards the back is the purple sprouting broccoli for next spring. The outdoor crop of corn is looking nice and strong. It's starting to produce some nice looking cobs but I'll only know really how well they do in probably two or three weeks time, but I'm remaining optimistic. I think in this kind of season, you have to be optimistic during really challenging uh, weather events. And I think that for the whole part, I, I do feel like the gardens really thrived this year, um, but it would be a really nice cherry on the top to have a nice successful outdoor sweet corn crop because just like the cucumbers I've never grown them outdoors before but I'm trying to be a little bit more brave and push outside of my comfort zone and we'll see if that will be rewarded or not. This is a Welsh runner bean variety, Ron the Black, it's something I've wanted to grow for many seasons now. Finally have the seeds and I'm gonna I'm gonna harvest this one. Uh, you can kind of see the the nice length uh, to this runner bean but for the most part I'm going to try and save as much seed as possible. Runner beans are one of the easiest crops actually to save seed from um, so I'm going to save most of these as seed and grow a lot more next year hopefully a nice long row of them but they taste really nice they look nice and it'll just be nice to have my own seed stock and maybe share it around with some friends. It's been a really good year for dwarf French beans I did a video of 
speaking about how useful they are as a crop and even all of the ones that I've sown after that video they're all starting to crop and produce now and just a little example where very easy you can get carried away with how big things grow these leeks were planted I thought they had plenty of space they're being a little bit swamped it's turning into a jungle no matter how much you try and keep on top with the squash harvest it seems like when you look away even for like 10 minutes 10 15 minutes you get another big monster my feeling now i think in terms of trying to deal with all the gluts is actually making some big batches of courgette soup or zucchini soup i think it's a really nice soup i really rate it so if i can make a load of batches and freeze it for winter um i think that's my key strategy to try and deal with all of these so this is where we had the big hedge of calendula but that got some kind of powdery mildew it's been quite a big problem actually for a lot of gardeners this year because of how dry it's been but i, I wanted to highlight that i just cut it out and i've transplanted a bunch of beetroot and radish but the main thing i want to highlight is just how beautiful amaranth is i know i've already mentioned it in this video but that's just a few plants right at the very corner of the bed and it lifts this whole side of the garden. So moving forward, I know next year I want to add more pockets of amaranth in and around the garden just because you'd like, you turn the corner and your first thought is what is that? What is that beautiful colour? I love it. This is a perennial fennel as a herb. The structure it adds to the garden is amazing. It's loved by pollinators. So this little bed here didn't actually exist last year. I was bored over winter and I thought, I just need to create a little bit of extra growing space. Had some spare bits of wood and I built this. And I think after being inspired so much by the dedicated herb garden at our other site, Dan Ronen, I've decided that over autumn and winter, I'm going to plant this up with a load of different perennial herbs just to enjoy the amazing colours that they provide this time of year. So inside the solar tunnel, this area here, I'm actually going to start keeping quite clear because in the solar tunnel, but also the polycrub, there is a lot of space that will soon be available. Well, I don't want to say soon because it, it might still be six weeks away, maybe even more for when all of the tomatoes come out. Tomatoes are a key crop for me and they occupy a lot of space, but because of the, the usefulness of having something that's undercover that protects from the hardest of frost, but also mainly the rain, the hail and the snow, I'm gonna be growing, keeping as much roots in the ground as possible in undercover growing spaces with the likes of lots of different salads and annual herbs and root crops. So this I say in two or three weeks time, there's gonna be absolutely brimming with trays of seeds and seedlings ready and starting to grow in preparation to replace the tomato clear out. So this top part of the garden is more of a, oh, I'll put something here and deal with it a bit later kind of thing. And I always felt that this area here felt a little bit underutilized. Yes, we've got some water storage here, but I've actually put in a circular Vigo garden bed because circular makes it much easier I think to fit awkward spaces and you wouldn't even know that there's a there's a bed in here because of all this growth we've got uh, we've got some more of these sunflowers coming through which look really really nice obviously runner beans we've got some dwarf beans below here some ochre and I've also got spaghetti squash that's growing behind me and around and I had a little check and there's some really nice looking fruits the plant is looking really healthy and it's really kind of lifted this corner it's turned it from a patch of weeds into more harvest more food extra productivity it's been a bit of a funny year for tomatoes to be completely honest with you because it's actually been so hot it's almost been too hot for their optimum growth in here in the double insulated polycrub i'm absolutely okay with that because Part of the reason was forgetting to open the doors one of the days, which actually killed off the tops of the tomato plants. So that was a hard lesson learned. I think it would have been slightly different had that not happened. But since coming back, I've actually seen that a lot more tomatoes have finally started changing colour, a lot of hope. This is still, for us, very early in terms of the main tomato supply. September is usually where it's at, but I'm looking forward to just continuously snacking on these for as many weeks as I can possibly cram in. 
One thing that's been a big success this year is actually a bit of succession planting with cucumbers. So the ones to the right of me are just starting uh, to finish, but these are working so well. We're using the, the Charles Dowding method of pruning them. They're looking really healthy. Look how nice these cucumbers are looking. One of the key things now is firstly to prune these cucumbers, but actually also to start pruning all of the tomatoes quite heavily because it's heading towards, well, it is the end of summer. There is now getting a risk of certain diseases to really come in and take hold. So the priority now is to start wherever possible opening space for airflow and allowing that good airflow. So it's going to be much harder and less inviting for diseases to take hold and take over these really precious crops. There's something really special about this time of year. Yes, it's a little bit of a bittersweet moment with the summer kind of rolling to an end, but I just start, <laughs> to be really honest with you, I get really excited about autumn and winter, a whole different category of harvest, but also to know that I can put in I've got all that time to put in as much work as possible for next year's growing season. And I, I really love it. I feel like it's a different kind of energy. I'm feeling energized by it. But right now I'm going to go and do a nice big harvest because there's a lot of food in here. And I look forward to seeing you again next week where there's actually an, a special announcement, something that you're not going to be expecting.